She's back with another monthly update on all things luxury fashion. The news, any trending items, collaborations, launches, everything you need to know about, links as usual are below. But before we get into it, this part of the video is kindly sponsored by Whatnot. Whatnot is a super fun live shopping app. I've been going live on there for the past few months. If you've managed to join any of those, you know how much fun we do have on there. We look at some fabulous bags, we have a chat. You never know what's gonna happen, which is the beauty of live. So I'm going live on there in April. I um, have been picking out a selection of really, really amazing, authentic, always authentic designer bags that I'll be going through. They will be listed at incredible prices um, and some auctions will be starting at one singular dollar. There are some great deals to be had. Whatnot is also hosting their first Fashion Spring sale event where you can get pre-loved Chanel, Dior, Fendi, Gucci, you name it, they've probably got it at like 70% and more off for 72 hours. So that's from April the 5th to the 7th. I will be going live on April the 5th at 3.30 EST, which I think is 8.30 UK time. Um, everything is open worldwide. There will just be specific shipping to your country, but everybody is able to be there. I did want to give you a little sneak peek of three of the bags that will be included that I have chosen. First of all, uh, we do know when it comes to pre-loved that great deals are to be had on Chanel items. And what's this? You know I love a Jersey Chanel bag. We have a classic double flap, okay, vintage, 24 karat hardware. This is a smaller version of a bag that my mum has that I always thought was the most fun thing growing up which is this like puffed little tote. She's squidgy, she's easy, she's carefree. And again, what with the price increases, um, pre-loved is not a bad way to go when it comes to Chanel. And also I found this Fendi baguette that is so unique and fabulous and interesting. Have you ever seen one like her? Look at the buckle. Fabulous turquoise wave design on it super easy navy canvas throw over your shoulder and go and nobody else will have the same bag for those who like beauty or those who are looking for something to put inside their bag um there will also be 50 of my favorite dior lip oil that i'm wearing on my lips right now that's why they look so juicy and glorious um also available for 70 percent off during live april the 5th go down into the description box click the link to create a whatnot account find me on there at cassie thought bookmark the show so that i can see you there at 3 30 or anytime between the 5th and the 7th of april as part of that fashion spring sale event to get deals on designer pieces thank you so much whatnot for sponsoring that part of the video we have got lots of luxury news autumn winter 2024 fashion week came to a close and I did a video kind of going through my faves and my not so faves. Um, I'll have that linked below. But I did find there was a list of the most viewed shows on Vogue Runway. Vogue Runway basically publishes all of the pictures from the shows. They did their top 10 most viewed shows. I'm going to go through the top five. In at number five is Dior, who had a very questionable Miss Dior section um collection of clothes within their collection that was a laziness with a capital l in my opinion but maybe everybody just wanted to see it for themselves i don't know in at number four we have Miu Miu, as we know one of the hottest brands at the moment they've been going crazily sales are up some ridiculous number of percent therefore you are not surprised that in third place is prada Miu cheers rain continues in at number two chanel everybody's um lovable villain the lovable bit is even questionable at the moment and then in at number one which kind of shocked me a bit was Saint Laurent because I didn't actually hear too much talk about Saint Laurent this season um but listen people still want to see those um glorious sort of flesh tone nudie transparent pieces walking up and down the runway apparently yeah Paolo Piccioli I think it's Piccioli is how his last name was pronounced, has left Valentino. Oh, he's been creative director, solo creative director since 2016 and has been at the brand for 25 years. When you say it like that, you're like, okay, I see why he's like done, wants to move on, do something different or whatever it is. But at the same time, 
for a lot of us, this is the Valentino that we know. It is Pier Paolo. I mean, as much as it got to a point where it was annoying and it sort of lived consistently whenever I closed my eyes, all I saw was Valentino PP Pink, it was genius. That's just a very recent example of how, you know, amazing he, are, he is as a creative director. But now it all makes sense that his final collection for the brand was all black. His Autumn Winter 2024 show was from top to tail all black outfits. I saw something this morning that was like, oh, is Alessandra McKelly in talks? That would be a great fit. And what do we see today announced? Alessandra Michele is in fact the new creative director of Valentino. I'm very excited about this. Um, I believe his first collection will be shown in September, which will be spring summer 2025. And I just think it will be really, really interesting to see Valentino through his lens. I think it's gonna be great. There's so much for him to play with. This is, I've, I've been waiting for this, I'm excited. Dries Van Noten has left his eponymous brand. He has been um, in fashion for 38 years, uh, his career. And again, he's like, it's my time, time to pass on the torch, as it were. Dries is known for patterns and colour and the company that owns the majority stake of Dries Van Noten, uh, Puig, They've said that Dries is their fastest growing niche brand. So they're doing well in Dries' own words, however, I will stay involved in the house I treasure so much. Matches fashion is dead. About two weeks after I did a dedicated video with Matches Fashion, they announced that they were going into administration. <laughs> they were bought in December of 2023 and within three months, Fraser's group who bought them announced that it's continually missed its business plan targets and um, there's no hope for it apparently. And that's why if you've previously shopped at Matches or you get their emails, they are like, oh, 20% off everything. First of all, if you're going out into administration, it should be a little bit more than 20% off in my opinion. But keep in mind that if you do decide to buy anything, they don't have a returns team from what I've heard. So if you know something that you want in the size that you're 100% sure is gonna work for you, then you might be able to get a good deal. Otherwise, buyer beware. This is also super sad because it was, you know, a very well-loved British fashion retailer. And theirs is being taken to court. Once again, I did a whole video on this, um, if you want the ins and outs, but high level. Two California-based shoppers um, are doing a class action lawsuit against Hermes, uh, alleging that they are involving themselves in antitrust practices. Basically, they allege that in order to be offered a Birkin, you have to buy all of these ancillary products that you maybe do or don't want, whatever. They're basically saying that that is tying of goods, which is you can only buy one good if you buy another. The thing is, is and, and look, I don't know whether or not they've got a solid case here. I'm not a lawyer. I've got no idea what's going on. Um, but I, I guess they would have a stronger case if this is like very explicit from Hermes, but it's very sort of like, obviously we know about the Hermes game, allegedly, but if it's not explicitly done and there are some people that are walking in and getting offered and all of that, then maybe that's hard to prove. I don't know, but it will be very, very interesting how this plays out what this means for the Hermes game and all of that business, and um, I will keep you updated. Nicolas De Felice um, for Jean-Paul Gaultier Couture. He is the creative director of Courage. Courage has been definitely having a moment at the moment. He joins a long list of guest designers for Jean-Paul Gaultier's couture line. Each season, there's a new guest designer. He joins Olivier Roussten, Haider Ackerman, Simone Rocha, Glenn Martins, to name a few. And we will see that in June during the next Paris Couture Fashion Week. Chanel is putting their prices up yet again. In this sick game that Chanel likes to play with us, um, we didn't sign up for it, yet another price increase is on the horizon. WWD recently did an interview with, who was it? Chanel's president who alluded to more price increases and um, it seems like it will be worldwide with the exception of Japan to account for currency things. But what was very interesting was this particular quote. We are not chasing a market positioning, but we are raising our prices to cover our costs. Hmm. 
Louis Vuitton Place opens in Bangkok. So this is going to be like a one-stop shop for all things fabulous Louis Vuitton. Um, it is going to include a retail space, a restaurant, a cafe, and an exhibition space. In the exhibition, it covers two floors. The exhibition space will um, allow you to sort of like get up close and personal with the process of how they make some of the iconic Louis Vuitton bags and also have examples of previous um, fabulous uh, collaborations that they've done over the years. So if you are planning to travel to Bangkok or you live there, it is definitely worth a trip because also that cafe will have like really really cute little monogram chocolates and macaroons and other delicious little things. Laura Piana is finding themselves in a little bit of trouble due to underpaying workers. So for this one I did want to sort of read off an excerpt of an article from Business of Fashion because I don't want to get it wrong. So once a year Andrea Barrientos, a 75 year old subsistence farmer in the Peruvian Andes, works free of charge for the world's richest person. She does that by joining dozens of people from her village in herding wild vicuñas interesting animal, never heard of it, for miles on a remote plain 13,000 feet above sea level and shearing them for their soft golden brown wool. Vicunias produce the finest and most expensive wool there is. Laura Piana sells a Vicunia sweater for about $9,000. This isn't a pricey 500 pound cashmere, you know, jumper. This is a $9,000 sweater. Barrientos' indigenous community of Lucanas, whose only customer is Laura Piana, receives about $280, 9,280, for an equivalent amount of fiber. That doesn't leave enough to pay Barrientos, whose village expects her to work as a volunteer. Meanwhile, Laura Piana is owned by LVMH, blah, 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 richest man in the world. Laura Piana has since disputed this. So in a article on Fashion Network, they basically said that the community receives up to several hundred thousand dollars on average for their work every year, blah, blah, blah. And more broadly, Laura Piana has paid nearly 20 million over the last 10 years to its Peru-based suppliers to buy Vicuña yarn. So I don't really know where this has come from and who's right. Moving into new and noteworthy Margiela and Gentle Monster. If you are looking for an interesting or timeless pair of sunglasses, you may want to look at this collaboration. I believe this is the second collaboration between the um, Belgian Margiela and the South Korean Gentle Monster. Um, loads of different styles within this, but two um, that are worth highlighting are the Temple-less mask glasses. These are shield-like glasses that do not have arms. I tried them on. Okay, first of all, I was randomly invited to a high snobiety event for this and I was like, oh my gosh, how exciting. I got there and realized that by far I was the most uncool person in the room. Everybody was so like painfully cool and like edgy and I was there looking like a lemon in the corner, but I got to try on the pieces. So the mask sunglasses are very cool and interesting. I don't know how much that's gonna hurt after an hour or two. Um, and then the rest of the sunglasses are very sort of like simple, easy to style, throw on the top of your head to top off a look. And some of them are made with leather. The mask sunglasses come in like a really fabulous silver padded pouch that is modelled after the Margiela pillow clutch. Coperni's out of this world bags. Coperni, known for the swipe bag that they did out of glass. They've now got a version that's made out of 99% air. Yeah, okay, so they basically did this. It's been backed by NASA. It's aerogel is the material, and it was made in collaboration with um, Professor Ionis, Ionis Michaludis, who is a visual artist and researcher, and this is the first time that the material has been used um, in like an artistic way, basically. So it is a silicon-based material with a, with, with, with a spongy texture that is a thousand times less dense than glass and this whole bag weighs 37 grams. I believe that is the weight of a penny. And they also launched on their website this month a bag that's made out of Meteor Rock that retails for $45,000. 
So I really think you've got both ends of the spectrum because I don't know how heavy a meteor is, but I think it's quite heavy. Each, um, apparently if you want one of these $45,000 bags, each one is made from meteor rock from different parts of the world. Interesting. Not something that I personally want to add to my collection, but I mean, if you are a collector, that's a collector's piece, maybe? <laughs> Celine is going to launch Beauty following their fragrance line. Shout out to Black Tie. Excellent fragrance. They are going to launch Beauty and they launch with the same thing everybody else launches, which is a red lipstick. And it's called, what is it? La Rouge Celine. It's always a sodden red lipstick. It's never a selection of nudes, is it? They are going to come out with a full range of shades in January 2025. But there is one thing that we know for certain that the packaging will be. Moving into hot new items. Mew Mew, hottest brand of the moment, everybody's been talking about her, blah, blah, blah. I went scrolly scrolling on the internet and was like, is there anything, you know, quite good? And I came across this really, really amazing pair of heels. They are black satin. Ballet inspired, right? You can tell by like the front of it and the gathering of the, um, the, the, the sort of little pleats that go around the toe like a ballet shoe with a cluster of pearls in a slingback stiletto with a padded insole. I really like it. I think it's different. It's interesting. And you know, that is what piques my interest. <laughs> also, I've been kind of obsessed with the Savette Symmetry pouch. This is a very Laura Piana L19, Hermes, Pochette, Kelly Pochette and all of that. Comes in a few colours, not that many though. There's one colour in particular that I really like. I don't know if I need to get it, let me know. I will say that a subscriber mentioned, because I did a little YouTube shorts about this, that they bought one and the flap was wonky. So I don't know if this is something that's consistent with a lot of them or some of them have this problem, but if you are going to buy one, double check the flap because nobody wants a wonky flap. Um, however, I, I just like that like, I like the roundedness of the hardware on it. It's nice and the price point isn't, um, you know, it doesn't make you want to crawl into a hole and die. Uh, I love a liar and they have their fabulous liqueur bag, which they are now doing in two colors that are absolutely delicious for spring summer. They have this baby pink, that looks like a lovely little strawberry ice cream. And they also have a butter yellow. Both of these colors are just like sorbet deliciousness. I want to eat them. And they look great hanging off over the shoulder. Thank you so much to Whatnot for sponsoring the earlier part of this video. Click the link in the description to make an account. Bookmark my show and I will see you on April the 5th. Let me know what you thought of the news this month. I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. And in the words of my father. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye guys.